Hello there. My name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And I've been meaning to do more study with character portraits lately. So for this sprite analysis, we're going to take a look at the portrait style from the RPG Chrono Trigger, first released for the Super Nintendo in 1995. I guess the first thing to mention is that the portraits in this game are actually adaptations of hand-drawn character illustrations, the ones that you'd see throughout the game manual. This artwork was made by Akira Toriyama, who served as a character designer and artist on the game, and you may recognize his name as the creator and artist of the Dragon Ball series. And certainly, his iconic style is quite recognizable across the character art of Chrono Trigger as well. So from a pixel art perspective, aside from just learning how to draw like Toriyama, I guess the question is, you know, what other useful information can be extracted from these portraits when considering an illustrated feel in pixel art portrait design? Well, these portraits are 48 by 48 pixels. And this one of Chrono, for example, uses a total of 15 colors. Certainly the main construction of the portrait comes directly from that source artwork. However, there's a bit more going on than simply scanning the artwork and reducing it into a space of 48 by 48 pixels. Resizing the artwork in this way just gives you that low-res JPEG-y look. And even restricting the color count of that resized image to only 15 colors is still just an approximation of what a polished pixel art portrait can achieve. The translation of an illustrated work into a clear low fidelity appearance requires a pixel level attention to detail, and this can be accomplished through clean line work and deliberate choices in the color selection that ensure adjacent clusters of pixels blend together evenly. For example, the bright highlights on Chrono's face are made using a white tone, which then blends with his skin tone using a single layer of an intermediate color. In general, this kind of blending helps provide soft transitions between adjacent tones, and is used in several areas of the portrait shading. Including the white highlight, his entire skin coloration is comprised of six shades, which trend towards higher saturation and lower brightness to create steps of color that are used to generate dynamic lighting and dimension of the facial features. There's also an efficiency to the color palette, where the reds and oranges are shared between his hair and scarf, and one of the skin tone colors is even repurposed as a shade tone within the bandana. So all of these deliberate choices give an additive effect that creates cohesion and clarity in translating the pixel design from the original artwork, and really makes the most of the restricted space here. What always stood out to me as well is how the dimension and the colors of these portraits have this almost painted storybook or fairy tale feel about them, and I think that's very fitting of the grand scale of this game. When placed alongside the character sprites, we can see that the portrait colors appear a little bit more muted than the sprite palette. And this is actually a good lesson for me personally, because I tend to maybe go a little bit overboard with my efficiency of color use, that I almost by default create character portraits that use the sprite palette as the portrait palette. But in this case, uh, if we use the sprite palette to create these character portraits, it ends up being just a little bit too much. Actually, I think Luca and Robo probably translate really well here. Um, there's maybe something about the mechanical textures that fit well with the contrast from the sprite palette. And I have always loved the purple-green-orange color harmony of Luca's character sprite in particular. But the other characters, uh, they at least really benefit from that softer touch in the color count of the original palettes. So how do we quantify what these softer colors actually are? Like, what does that mean? Um, well, if we pull up some of the color values for Chrono as an example, we'll notice a lot of instances where the portrait colors are a lower saturation and lower brightness when compared to the character sprite. In general, decreasing the saturation and or the brightness of a color can help in establishing a softer color harmony, as the colors aren't brought into these bright extremes where they may be hard to look at, or might compete with one another for attention. In a character sprite, this strength and contrast is obviously quite a useful thing, as we're hoping to have the character be immediately recognizable on screen and not get lost in the background. But for the portrait, there's certainly an opportunity to refocus the artistry in a different way, as there may not be the same consideration of these competing elements. So I think that'll do it for this one. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope this helps provide at least a few considerations of portrait design. So thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square.